And a lot of times men also, they don't read the signals that women are giving. So many relationships fall apart because the woman was saying, I told, how many times did I, you know, yes. have mentioned this? And the guy's like, what? I, I don't remember hearing that. Yes. And it's just like, Phew. and that's a real problem because guys get blindsided and dumped all the time because of not paying attention. Did you push record? <laughs> Thanks again for tuning back into our second act with Paige and Silka. For your second act of life. How you doing, Silka? I'm doing great. Uh, Paige, we are continuing our conversation sure. with Robert Manny, the radio host, blogger, and author of The Guy's Guy Guide to Love. Thank you for staying over with us. My pleasure. Thank you, Silka. Thank you, Paige. It's great to be here. I hope I can uh, help out. I'm learning as, uh, as we speak together. <laughs> We're doing this both on camera and off camera. Yeah. This, this is, but I'm having a great time. And I, I was just saying the, uh, our off camera conversation, we should have recorded it. There were some interesting things about being a father late in life, which, uh, Robert is. And, uh, but we will, we will save that for another segment. <laughs> uh, today we want to continue talking about, uh, love and relationships, finding lo love after 50 and how emotional, we hear this term, emo, uh, emotionally unavailable or available. These are you know, terms we hear all the time, you can search them. Uh, it's, you know, what is it and how, why is that so important to one understand and how does that affect our relationships after 50? So I will speak from my perspective, but I'm gonna let Robert go first because he's been our guest. So. I talk all the time. Go ahead, Robert. Well, as a guy over 50, I actually uh, fell in love and got married at over 50. I was on Match.com having the time of my life. And my wife went on uh, for a three-day free, free weekend. And um, uh, she got me to break my rule of uh, meeting before having a phone call. And, uh, and then we, there was no looking back. And three dates into, the re into our dating, if you will, I said, how do I be a good boyfriend? I've had so many girlfriends and it's never worked out long, long term, the real one. And she said, pay attention. And I said, is that it? And she said, that's it. And uh, that woke me up a lot because I realized how great women are at paying attention to the little things. They notice everything, your mood and all that. And guys notice a lot about themselves. We're very ego driven. And maybe that's because of culture and society. Yes. And, and, and that's made us less, I'm getting to the point here. It's made, made No, this us, is good. Keep it, going. It's made us less emotionally available because we're we're seen to be uh, you know hunters. Uh, we you got a problem, we'll solve it. It's like the couple that goes home after they they're both working, and the wife wants to talk about, the woman wants to talk about. Here's what happened today, and the guy's like, "Well, try this or try this or try this," because if he's telling her his issues, he probably is open to so solutions. And that's not really what women want. They don't. They they're smart enough to solve their own stuff. They just they want to be heard and they want to share. And men uh, now need to develop that skill. And the only way we're going to be able to do that is with women who love us and are willing to take the time to teach us and work with us. So I'm going to say something about take the time to teach and work because what I'm finding is women now are saying. I'm not going to teach. You have to figure it out and own your shit yeah. and learn how to do it because women have spent decades teaching and trying to like nurture and do this. That doesn't mean women won't hang in there with you because we're good at hanging in there. But, but things are changing where women are saying, you know what, we're owning what we do. It's time for you guys to own what you do and learn what is emotional health. We can model it for you. We can validate things for you. We can have conversations with you. We can maybe point you in directions, but it has to be, you have to step in and own. If you want to learn how to be emotionally available and what that's about and how you feel, we'll hold the space for you. So you feel open and not judge because I know judgment is a really big thing sometimes that women will come in and kind of uh, because for years when we're not getting what we need what do we do we go to that place of of this so I just wanted to address that, that let, me, really let me say one thing let me say and that yeah. is you know like you two are the experts you know exactly what that means and what you know I, I uh, to somebody like treat me like the audience or people you know they've 
what does it mean to be emotionally unavailable? What is it even? How do I know I'm not? How, as a woman, do I tell a man, well, you're not emotionally unavailable? How does he take that? We, we don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know what I mean? I, I, I don't really even quite know what that means and what and how, how should I be or, or not when it comes to being emotionally available or unavailable. I think that is, that is the question. I think that's why a lot of guys are confused because they're not sure they know that's a that's a buzzword and they're like I have to be emotionally available but they're not sure what it is Paige, what is it what do we need Wait, to know are you asking me absolutely okay all right so I'll take my perspective <laughs> what <are you> doing? <laughs> so um, and you can jump in Robert at any time so so many times humans come from here the brain because it's easier it's safer and what I've noticed with men like you had said Robert you know they're problem solvers. They fix it. It's a logical component of A plus B equals C. Hey, we can figure that out. And for them, for men, what I notice is for them, that makes them feel good too. Look, I did this for you. I was able to do this for you. This is the way I'm showing love. I'm fixing a problem. This is this is my love language. And that's a whole other show about what's your love language. Yeah. Um, it's tr coming from here and connecting to your heart center. You know, in the embryo, the heart and the head are together and then slowly the head grows away from the heart and I always believe that it misses each other and we strengthen the head so so much that we forget that hey the ego and the head really do want to go back to connecting with the heart so you know when I give that type of scenario it's like look this is the emotions these are the feelings and sometimes and you'll laugh Robert because I think you'll get this I've got this sheet. I've given it to Silka before. We've used it before on shows. I have this sheet of, Lord, there's so many faces of different emotions. And there's a label of what the face is, you know, betrayal, um, selfish, hurtful, whatever. I use that with my adults and specifically men all the time to say, look, here, this helps. And they go to me, oh, my gosh. This is really helpful because they can't pull all of that out of their brain. So to see something and to have a word really, really helps. Because I think we said in our last segment, we didn't grow up in a culture where men were taught to connect to their inner knowing and into their emotions. So you don't know what you don't know. And you it's like it's like having a kindergarten and expecting a kindergarten to know what you know chemistry is. It's not going to happen. So you have to break it down. I used to be a fourth grade teacher. So I break everything down into, you know, you know, fourth yes, grade terms. Please. So I'll just kind of pause there for a moment and you can jump in, Robert. I, I think you're absolutely correct. I don't think that's an easy thing for guys to kind of process because yeah, they're, not. They're, they're used to using their brain. But I, I'll tell you, I, I learned personally, uh, I realized I had an epiphany and it was like the reason I haven't met the one is because I haven't made room for somebody else in my heart. And that 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 started me working with my heart space. And as soon as I did that, I met my future wife and the whole process took a year or two. But that was the key, realizing that I had to make room for somebody else. I think actually women sometimes in the dating world suffer from the same thing where they don't make room for somebody else. Um, and, and a, lo a lot of guys don't even think about their heart space. So I guess the first step I would suggest for men is, you know, use your brain, but also use your gut and then use your heart and say, how can I do the loving thing here? How can I be uh, present for my partner? And how can I, how can I adapt and change? Because we ha all have to adapt and change all the time. And it's not a bad thing. That doesn't mean I'm losing it, my identity. It actually means that I'm becoming a more dimensionalized person. I'm blossoming as a human being. It's a really good thing. So yeah. it needs to be a real positive. It doesn't have to be, oh, like, who am I now? This, that's not who I am. No, this is you, but this is a more expanded version of you. And that's what we all need to do in terms of, you know, raising our frequency, raising our vibration, and just getting to the next level. And I think way down low, the deep down, men want to do that, but they don't know how to tap into that and get started. So maybe that's where women can help out. I'm not saying it's a, you know, women have to treat guys like the fourth grade teacher because we don't deserve, we need to be able to handle our own stuff. But I think to help get started, it's, it's important. And a lot of times men also, they don't read the signals that women are giving. So many relationships fall apart because the woman was saying, I told, how many times that I, 
you know, yes. to mention this. And the guy's like, what? I, I don't remember hearing that. Yes. And it's just like, Phew. and that's a real problem because guys get blindsided and dumped all the time because of not paying attention. You know, Silco, this is a really good time for what Robert had just said to kind of um, let him know about the training we did on the chakra training where we actually went through each each chakra um, and with the heart center training, teach people how to do a very simple meditation to open your heart center. I mean, my husband and I do it every morning sitting outside on the yoga mat and he'll come out and go, Okay, I'm ready for my heart meditation now. So we just go outside, you know, on the yoga mat. But we did a training. It's not easy. If you're a guy, that's really, that's one thing. That's been the biggest challenge I've had is like, how do I open my heart space? I've asked every metaphysical teacher uh, on my show to like, ex you know, help me with that. But ultimately, I have to do the work. And I find it's a challenge to, to do it on a regular basis. So I'd love to learn that. Yeah, and what I find too, I do a lot of hands-on work as well, and when I have the men on my table, placing my hands on their heart center and then having them place their hands on their heart center and you know, having them repeat different things and bringing their awareness down to their heart center teaches them that going into their body is not scary and going into the heart center is a really safe space. So it's it's little steps of having them actually feel this part of their body and actually, you know, giving them verbiage to use because no one's done that before. So, you know, small, small steps for them to practice where they can feel successful. And the great thing is, is they'll go home and they'll say to their significant others, I'm doing this homework tonight that Paige gave me and this is what I'm doing. And their significant others are like, oh, this is fantastic. Then they come back and go, my wife thinks this is fantastic and they want to do more. So it's, you know, giving that little gentle, kind of look it's okay let me put my hands on your heart this is what it feels like bring your awareness down here what's it sense in a very small you know way because you never want to rip the band-aid off because all that does is rip a band-aid off and bleed so yeah you know uh just from a you know uh, a practical perspective that that stuff is terrific but you know we have a big group of men out there and they're dating and they're not being emotionally available and they're struggling with the definition of all of that what are some of the tips that you could give them to like how do i get started in kind of being the best guy i can be getting the best guy okay this is a great great question robert so what i found with men too is like you said they want the facts so first of all your wife said it to you you know be patient um, pay attention, but, but in order to pay attention and in order to, I could give you as many facts as possible, but if you're not connected to yourself, they have to understand what does that mean first? How do you connect to your inner knowing and yourself? Because a lot of times men go from the outside or they're up here. So right. you have to kind of come down to this place first and foremost to say, okay, what what's going on in here what do i feel is it anger first is it betrayal is it whatever it might be like how do i get into myself first they and, and a lot of times they have to take the step to work with somebody else so i can give all the facts possible but if you're just doing the facts but you're doing it externally outside of yourself and you're not learning about who you are and what this is and what's going on and what's been modeled to you growing up and how you did attach or how you didn't attach. Facts don't mean anything but facts. It, Question for it, Robert is uh, from a man's perspective then, uh, how do you, and you're an evolved man, <laughs> uh, how do you, you know, tell somebody who's not there, how do they know, oh my gosh, maybe I'm not emotionally available. What are the signs? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I think this, the number one sign is if their partner has a uh, underlying sense of resentment. That means they're not being present. And, uh, the, and as Paige, you said earlier, like we're not here, women today aren't here to kind of teach us. Well, men have to be there present to really start listening and paying attention. Like yesterday, my wife had a uh, uh, wisdom tooth, uh, not, well, not a wisdom tooth, root canal. And, oh. uh, and I, I busy with other stuff and it's the worst and she went through a to a uh, holistic person and a doctor and every dentist and it was like I thought normally I would like ask her how, how it is afterwards I made sure I called her in the morning I made sure I checked in with her before she went I made sure I checked in with her after when she got home I called her this morning to ask her how she's feeling and uh, I could sense 
how appreciative and surprised, yeah. pleasantly surprised she was that I was taking the time to do the little things. So I think for men is mirror your partner, do the little things, be present, pay attention. And that's not a bad, you're not, you're not turning into a woman. You're just being a better guy, a better human being. Because a lot of guys, they don't teach, they don't treat their women, their partner, like they treat their best friend. And it's ridiculous because your partner is going to be your best friend, your lover, your life partner, your soulmate, et cetera. You got to really do go the extra mile. And I have to remind myself all the time because, you know, sometimes you don't, you don't get exactly what you want when you want it. And uh, it's easy to just shut down if you're a guy. I'm like, I don't want to hear anymore. I do it myself, but we have to just keep working on it every day. How's she doing? What can I do to help her? What can I do to, you know, tune in and tune into how, how her life is going and what's happening with her right now? How can I be better? I think that's, that's the start. Once you start doing it, I think it becomes natural. It's just a matter of taking that first step and saying, how can I be better? And just the little steps or, or, or you know, put you on the right path. And a good question to ask your significant other is, how can I help you right now, honey? What do you need right now? Because that says, oh, you want to know, you know what I need. You also brought up something really important about men are better to their best friends than their significant other. I've also found that a man will, uh, sorry, not a man, a man will leave they will go and they will give everything to their career. They will pay attention. They will see the cues at their job. They will do anything they can that the job needs. And then when they came home, they don't give the same amount of attention and time to the person who's loving them, who's there building life for them. So the balance of you know their career, whether it's identity or whatever it is, or that's what they know how to do better, is really out of balance. Yes, that's a great point. I agree. 100%. I just wanted to say, because I thought that kind of dovetailed, you know, into what you were saying. Yeah. This is a great conversation. I love a great, Robert great Austin. conversation. I'd like to, uh, we're getting, starting to get to the end here again. And let's close it out with, uh, you know, on, on the man's behalf. What do women need to know? How can we help in that regard, you know, be a better woman to a man so we can be better together? That's a great question. Um, I think, you know, you have to, uh, in terms of communicating, where sometimes a guy has expressed everything I mentioned this, alluded to earlier about everything he feels about a subject. At a certain point, you have to ask yourself, do I need to keep pressing him or is that all there is? And with the risk of saying, like, sometimes guys are pretty simple, sometimes we are. We put it out there and it's like, I don't know, I, that's all I got. I don't have any magic dust on, on this. This is it. And uh, you have to realize that. Other th things are, you may think that you're being very clear with a man and they might not be picking up his signals because they're not wired to be as sensitive as you are right now and they need to work on that. But until they get there, you might have to be just a little bit more uh, overt in terms of something that's bothering you or something you want to talk about or something that's an issue or something that just needs to be discussed. So that and then also be present and see and see where a lot of guys have mental issues now find out what's going on with them um, <laughs> what, what are their like hot buttons and stress points in terms of their day to day is it work is it their bank account is it their health or is it the relationships is it family whatever it is and see if you can be there for them to help uh, you know help guide them through that yeah i know it's like extra work that you're coddling the guy, but it's not really that. It's about being a good partner and realizing that guys are guys, and we're you know we need to we need to do better. But I, I really think that women have to make a couple of adjustments to say, hey, if I want to be with this guy, let me work with him a little bit and see see how he does. If we all, all knew we were all perfect, all the guys knew everything and how to be, you know, maybe that wouldn't be that much fun or that challenging. Sometimes we need a little challenge, but um, this is how it is, and uh, guys. <laughs> Guys need some help. So either going to say, I don't need you or say, you know what? I think he I think this is a guy that has potential and can make some positive moves. And I think any man can as long as he puts his mind and as Paige says, puts his heart to it. And into it. I love it. Paige, anything else for you? No, I was chuckling inside of myself because yesterday my husband's like, I don't have anything else. I can't keep talking about this anymore. <laughs> Okay, and that's what happens with women is our our tolerance level is so much higher 
our capacity for emotions goes so much wider and deeper that when a man starts to share, we're like, okay, give me more, give me more, give me more. It's so, like crack. <laughs> yeah, that's the, whole, that's the whole thing of, you know, where we are too. So I just thought that I'd throw that in there. Guys, I love this conversation. And there are there are so many other things that you threw out that I would love to do follow-up segments on. Um, and, and we will... Yeah in the future uh robert again we will link to your book we will link to your radio shows to your website and we look forward to having you back on our second act with Paige and silka for your second act of life bye everyone If you haven't already done so, please be sure to subscribe to our channel. The button is right over here. Just click on through to YouTube. And when you see that little bell next to the subscribe button, hit that too. You'll be notified every time we post a new video. See you next time.